I mean, I'm, I'm excited and uh, apprehensive and also confused. I mean, like I never in my life expected to gig in uh, so many places that I get to gig in. Uh, and Gibraltar is certainly on that list just because... Uh, I, mean, I think the only comedian I know that's played there is Jimmy Carr, and he was the one that told me about the, the great venue, said it was really fun audiences... Uh, and that it was worth doing, but it's, you know, to be the second in to a place, um, um, I just don't know how it's going to go. Like, I know I, I know my comedy does well in Australia, it does well in Russia, it does well in America, maybe Gibraltar's the one place where they're just like, this is, <laughs> this is garbage. <laughs> well, I was actually going to ask you, um, do you do much research on where you perform? Do you know what issues to touch on, what buttons to press? No, I like to, I think comedy is uh, universal and I think it's very important for me to just try and do the same set everywhere, not change my material just because I think one place is going to react to it more or less. Like I do lots of material about, or on my last show, I did lots of show material about uh, sex education and you'd go to Scotland and England where sex education is good and it's on there and then you go to Sweden and Norway where sex education is obviously good and you get it from like the age of 12 and then we'd go to Slovakia and Slovenia and they were like what on earth is sex education and that in itself not changing the material allows the you know me to have a really honest reaction uh, with the audience so I'm going to do a little bit about Gibraltar because I'm hugely ignorant about it like I, I i i don't even think i could name two things about it so i'll do a little bit but i also want to i want to i, I find the best way to learn about a place is to just experience it like i don't want to read any news articles on it or hear people have been there i want to go there myself and go okay i can i can suss this place out obviously i mean well maybe not obviously like will, will the last year kind of be part uh, of your of your act because I mean uh, no topic really from the two specials that I've seen from some of the stuff you've done in American TV as well um, throughout your career no topic seems to be sort of off limits so how do you go about selecting what you're going to to sort of talk about and will anything that's happened in the last year can you sort of turn that into like uh, you know like a, a a comedy sketch um I, I... I mean, I can. So I wrote this show pre-pandemic. I was out in New York and LA sort of hammering it into shape, ready to tour, tour it. And then the pandemic hit. And, you know, part of me wanted to write jokes about the pandemic and talk about it. But man, we've all, everyone's sick of it. You know, the comedy, as much as I do like talking about dark topics and taboo subjects, whatever you want to call them, comedy is a lot of the time it's about escapism. You know, and and I often feel like there's nothing I can say about COVID that hasn't been said. But it's also impossible to do a show that doesn't reference it because you know, you know, if you go on stage and you're like, "Oh, I was in an airport three months ago," people are like, "No, you weren't. What are you talking about? That's an outright lie. None of us have done anything for ages." So instead of talking about the pandemic, and because it's so polarized as well, like it's amazing that a global pandemic has turned into a left and right argument, which is insanity in itself um i just don't think i've got anything refreshing to say about it but the references in it are about my handling of the pandemic you know how it changed my perspective and how it caused me to have i think i'm on eight mental breakdowns now which i think is the average i think you know that's uh, um so I, I i mean it's impossible not to touch on it but it's absolutely not mm. the focus of any of the routines just because i think people would be like you know if i'm up there and i'm like i had a miserable pandemic and they'd all be like we all had miserable pandemics like what is this a competition yeah. <laughs> let's laugh let's laugh at how dumb the americans are or let's laugh at this and that and yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you know about the setting of, of where the show's going to be at St. Michael's Cave? It's certainly going to be different to many places you've performed in. Man, it genuinely it probably is going to go up there as the most interesting venue I've ever uh, performed in. Uh, and when it was first pitched to me, I've got no shame in admitting it. I was like, no, no, absolutely not a job. I don't want to gig in a cave. Are you insane? Like, and and then my promoter uh, out there, in, it was my Australian promoter, actually, uh, Tom, 
said, talk to Jimmy, because Jimmy's played there before. Um, and he swears by it, says it was a lovely gig. And uh, and he did, he sung the praises of it. And I tend to trust Jimmy's judgment on good venues. He's another comedian that likes to play everywhere. Um, and, and at this point, I'm excited. Because uh, even, even if the gig goes terribly, which I obviously hope it doesn't, right? But let's just say... I bomb. Everyone in Gibraltar just hates me. I'm the worst thing that they've ever seen live on stage. The photos will still look cool. <laughs> like, I'll still get to post it on Instagram being like, look at this cool venue. And none of them have to know how badly I did. I just get to point at this big, beautifully lit cave um, that that I got to perform in. And it's, uh, yeah, man, I, it's just, it's a cave and I've seen the photos of it. It's, I, I never, I mean, I guess acoustically it makes sense, mm. but I never in my life thought that I'd be gigging in a cave. And if I was gigging in a cave, it meant my career was going very badly as opposed to quite well. 